Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. Um, I took a little bit of time off uh, just with uh, San Antonio, some work picking up and everything like that, but should be getting back to some consistent uploads. Today's video's purpose is actually just to kind of go over some of the research that I've had um, just with the beginning of Regulation F, some things I've been coming across, some things that I think you guys should uh, keep your eyes out for, and just uh, some call outs. This isn't gonna be a video in which I give you guys just cores that you can immediately use um, just because it's so early in the meta I want everybody to be able to be inspired to kind of cook up their own teams and have a lot of fun with it there's so many things that you can do especially in a new regulation with so many mons being added um, but without further ado let's kind of go into might be a little disappointing for some of you guys but in the same sense Incineroar is back. Um, Incineroar easily is one of the best Pokemon just ever introduced in Pokemon, specifically because of the amount of support that it can do and the amount of damage that it can do if you don't respect it. I mean, he just essentially gives so much support to your team, being able to fake out opposing mons so they can't move right off the bat. You have Intimidate for damage mitigation. You have a very solid typing defensively and offensively with Fire Dark. And just being able to knock off items consistently as that is a buff that he actually has received in this generation. Getting knock off back. Um, and still keeping moves like Parting Shot so that you can kind of uh, mitigate, you know, swap in and out. And really nerf mons that are a bit either one, slower than you, or don't respect you in that turn. You can kind of nerf them and then let Incineroar just kind of get that pivoting in and out. I think Incineroar is going to be easily one of the best mons in this meta. I know a lot of you are going to be saying yes, obviously. It is a very obvious thing, yes. But it is a Pokemon that everybody needs to be watching out for. It definitely is. Um, before I go into two more, wanted to get the obvious out of the way. This is just kind of a fun set. Um, really no... Uh, damage calyx or anything like this this is my actual sword and shield incineroar build um i spe i forget specifically what i built this for but it's just an overall very bulky incineroar um but that can still attack and hit fairly hard um but i did want to go over this so in my testing i was able to go through 15 battles of um best of three online ladder and just kind of pull up some numbers over the past two days and just to go over them with you guys I will go over these really quick just so it's not super boring and just kind of yawn fest but um, Fluttermane of course is the most used Pokemon I will be going over Fluttermane in just a second followed by Rillaboom, Urshifu Rapid, Incineroar, King Gambit, and Raging Bolt everything else has been used you know once, twice Porygon two, three times. Um, but I would say, like, these top six right here, um, other than really King Gambit, because I think a lot of people are going to be sticking with King Gambit, and I think a lot of people are going to also move away from King Gambit, but I think King Gambit has a phenomenal... I would honestly call it buff in this regulation, just because I feel like Intimidate is going to be everywhere. Not even just necessarily... <clears throat> with Incineroar being so big, um, but with more along the lines that I think either way, somebody's going to find a way to put Intimidate on their team. I think damage mitigation is going to be huge from that side, and I really think because of how popular Incineroar is, I feel like Defiant, Competitive, you can really manipulate um, being able to activate those a lot in this generation. Or generation, my gosh, regulation get my brain back on track all right these are what i am calling the winners right now these are the obvious winners but i am going to be going over these so essentially speaking um next up i want to talk about is amoongus now the reason why i think amoongus actually wins really heavily in this generation or my gosh i keep saying generation regulation is because of its still viable versatility there's really nothing that just immediately, like, yes, you have Incineroar. I get that Incineroar is super solid into Amoongus. Pretty much forces it to Terra, everything along those lines. But with this 
uh, regulation, I feel like Amoongus just gets stronger um, because of the fact that it can support its teammates so well. And in my opinion, the biggest winner, um, spoilers right here, and we'll go over that in a second. Amoongus is really good into Fluttermain, and I just feel like, of course, Spore is the most broken move ever. Um, and being able to have a Pokemon that can really just support its team, being able to utilize tools such as Pollen Puff, um, and, you know, you can even give it, like, Clear Smog if we start seeing that Iron Defense stuff start popping up again. Um, start seeing some on Registeel, which I thought was really cool. So, there's a lot of things popping up, though. But I do really think that Amoongus actually is um, one of the biggest winners in this regulation, for sure. So, next up, I will talk about, in my opinion, the biggest winner of this regulation, and I think it's Fluttermane. Now, the reason on why I think Fluttermane is the best, I just think it is... The mons that are going to be good, Fluttermane just accents so well. I mean, it's like, oh, well, Incineroar's a dark type, and Incineroar has a whole bunch of things. It's like, you're immune to fake out because you're a ghost. There's so many dragons right now. Like, I will be going over one of the strongest picks in just a sec, but I just think Fluttermane is accented so much in this generation. Or, my gosh, I keep saying generation. I'm never going to get over that. I'll just leave it in. Whatever. <laughs> but it still has all of the same moves. I don't think it gained access to anything like super crazy i don't know if it even gained access to anything at all yeah no it's still the same but it's buffed because of what's gonna be good in this regulation for sure so i would say if you're having a hard time building right now and you're preparing for something like portland i would highly recommend just putting fluttermane on your team just so you can get used to this regulation um, I feel like Fluttermane is so good, and especially if you guys are very used to playing Fluttermane, I feel like this regulation is going to be such a cakewalk, um, early regulation, because of how good Fluttermane is. So, I would definitely recommend, I think Fluttermane, in my personal opinion, is the biggest winner in this regulation, so that is definitely one of them that I would say keep your eyes out for. Next up that I'll go over is Raging Bolt. Now... The thing that I will say with Raging Bolt is it is just that special attack stat is it's literally stronger than Flutter. And being able to have its access to its new move, and I know so many people have been calling this move out and everything like that, having a special electric sucker punch nerfs one of the best Pokemon in all of existence, which is Urshifu. It really does just help completely, almost completely shut it down. I mean, it is such a solid play, solid move. And of course, you know, you can do follow me and all that kind of stuff. But you also resist. And you've got such good bulk on this Pokemon. I mean, I've been seeing a lot of people running Assault Vest, which I think is phenomenal. Because it just accents this already massive bulk that it has. Because, I mean, with that 125... You're already at base 200. You really don't need any more. So you can just go like, you can go crazy and just kind of bulk yourself all the way out with special defense and just be like, yeah, I'm going to take every special hit ever. And you can even give yourself booster energy to be able to boost that special attack even further so that you can really rail things. I just think this is going to be one of the best Pokemon just because it hits so hard and the things that it does, it just does really well. So I would highly recommend getting better with Raging Bolt, getting used to it, um, and really just playing around with it, because I do think that Raging Bolt is such a winner in this regulation, because it does have a phenomenal defensive typing as well. Yes, you're weak to Fairy, Dragon, Ice, and uh, Ground, but you resist a lot of really common types, um, aka here, and yes, you can still be knocked off, I understand that, but in the same sense... I still think Raging Bolt is super solid, um, a special attacker, so Intimidate's not really going to matter, and uh, like I said, having this access to this move threatens so many mons, so definitely keep your eyes out for him. I'll kind of go through these winners a little bit faster, because I know that everybody probably already knows this. Um, I think Landorus Incarnate 
is just broken in this meta. Um, there are things that counter it, yes, but there are so many things that it beats. Um, if you set it up properly, you are going to be having a phenomenal time. Um, I really don't know much more to say. Uh, you do so well into things like Raging Bolt um, and just being such a solid special attacker, not having Intimidate affect you. I really think Landorus Incarnate specifically is just accented so well by a lot of what goes on in this. Um, I really think the Substitute set is super solid. I really like it with the Terra Poison Life Orb. Um, but I could also see running Sansier Storm on like rain teams because I do think rain teams actually could be so good, especially with our Chalodon. Which is a Pokemon that's really hard to utilize right now. I feel like you do have to invest a lot of resources, just from my experience. You guys might be having different experiences, but um, I truly think you have to invest so much to just ensure that that individual is alive. So, yeah. I would honestly say, though, Landorus, huge winner. I think Landorus is going to be one of the most consistent picks in this regulation for sure. I'm going to go over this really quick. There are things that beat him, but it is still Urshifu. Um, there's not much different to say, and especially because Urshifu does so well into Incineroar. I don't see it, like, immensely dropping. I do see the usage dropping a little bit because people will probably be like, I want to try something new. In the same sense, it's still Urshifu. It's still a Pokemon that can hit through Protect and always crit. It's always going to be good. Like, no matter what mons become really big in the meta no matter where the meta kind of shifts a pokemon that can always crit and hit through protect is always going to be good it's just it's urshifu so yeah like i said won't talk about him too much there are pokemon that really beat him but we'll kind of go over my next few um i'm gonna go over what i in my opinion my first sleeper picks are now everybody did hear about the magmar that ended up winning um that online tour and I do truly believe that Magmar and, um, I think Magmar's a little better than Electabuzz if you're wanting to use that Eviolite follow me type spread. If you want to use something like this, it actually is a really solid support mom. Being able to get access to Taunt, follow me, Burning Jealousy, gets access to Clear Smog if setup starts to become big. Um, you can run it as a physical attacker and give it like knockoff and mock punch for like priority and being able to get rid of items. Um, it gets access to Scorching Sands, which is actually kind of cool. Um, and Helping Hand, which just makes him a phenomenal support mon even more. Uh, you can give him Scary Face. There's just so much that you can do. Acid Spray, which could actually be really solid. Um, but there's so much you can do with this Pokemon. So, like, if you guys haven't played around with it, I definitely recommend it. Um, I think it actually does really well into a lot of the mons in this meta so um next up i'm going to talk about ogre pond wellspring specifically now the reason why i think ogre pond wellspring actually really it's it really does have a very solid i would say it's almost a little better in this regulation um the the biggest thing that i would say is um raging bolt does hard almost counter um ogre pond wellspring and of course, you can give it things like play rough so that you can kind of be better into that matchup. But I highly doubt that, you know, you're just going to be wanting to sit in front of a Raging Bolt. So build your team to be able to kind of have answers for Raging Bolt. But Ogre Pond is going to be that Pokemon that you guys are going to be really thankful for just as a support. I mean, being able to use Follow Me, being a Grass type, being completely immune to Spore, and um, being able to, of course, still mitigate damage from Urshifu and I I just think that Ogre Pond Wellspring is a very solid support mon um and that's how I think we should start to think about using it I do think the other Ogre Ponds actually are going to still be good um specifically I do think Hearth Flame is going to still be good because I think Sun actually has a really solid um chance to be really good in this meta but I'm just hoping some of these Pokemon can kind of spark your inspiration and be like, hey, this is what I want to see. This is what, or this was kind of what I was missing for my team. I'm, I'm just hoping I can help with that. 
Next up, I'm gonna go over Gouging Fire. Now, I oversaw this um, set from Moxie on um, Moxie Boosted on YouTube, kind of going over his tier list um, just through this new regulation. And I am a big fan of being able to just use a fast gouging fire, being able to pretty much just give it a good amount of speed, you know, hit it at that like 143 mark, and then just make him incredibly bulky. Like even if, you know, you're just going like, oh, okay, well I give him 200 HP and give it like solid bulk here, solid bulk here, for attack. The reason on why I am such a huge fan of this set, and really you could even just make him go like jolly, and then you could drop this, down to like 143 or 144 that'll outspeed um a majority of choice card flanderous but the reason i'm such a fan of this is because this is such a solid support mon i mean being able to get access to this new move burning bulwark which is just one of the best moves ever um being able to protect and then contact a burn immediately is phenomenal being able to threaten that like hey if you fake out realize that i'm about to hit you with an 140 base power move is or a 150 base power move my apologies um is just phenomenal um so people won't really if they do fake you out it's like oh that's fine you threaten almost a knockout into a lot of things uh breaking swipe to be able to mitigate damage and you can give it howl you can give it dragon dance you can kind of give it like there's so many moves that this Mon gets access to, and I feel as though that it, as a Pokemon, is going to be an incredible pick going into this regulation. Um, but I do think, and I thoroughly believe, that we don't really know how to use it yet. So once we kind of start to see what the meta becomes and how it develops, I'm curious to see how well Gouging Fire does. Next up, I really think Heatran is a huge winner in this. If I could put him in that little winner's area, I would. I think Heatran's phenomenal in this. Um, there are so many special attackers that I think are going to come up, and I think Heatran just does phenomenal into them. I really like Heatran in this. Um, yes, Landorus Incarnate is picking up really, really big, but in the same sense, the biggest reason on why I think Heatran is just a phenomenal mon in this meta is the amount of coverage moves that Heatran gets and a lot of the things Heatran can hit for super effective damage. Um, being able to be a steel type mitigates Psy Spam, which I'll go over in just a second. Um, and he just does phenomenal into Psy Spam. So there's your Psy Spam answer. Like I said, in my opinion, Fluttermane is the biggest winner in this regulation. He's phenomenal into Fluttermane. Phenomenal. Like, one of the best Pokemon you could have into Fluttermane. Um, and opposing fire types, like Incineroar. You get access to Earth Power. You get access to Terra and Terra Blast. You get just crazy good moves you get with Heatran. And I truly believe that Heatran can easily, easily be one of the best Pokemon in this um, regulation. But of course, he's not going to just be broken because um, there's a lot of things that beat it. So I would say keep your eyes out for Heatran. I would say if you're not... I know that a majority of us are like, man, Incineroar is so good, so I don't need my other fire type slot. If you're not liking Incineroar on your team, it's definitely a good consideration. I also, I don't think I put it on here. I really like Entei as well because of Interfocus. I think Entei could be really good. Um, so play around with some Mons. Don't just get attached to Incineroar, but I will say straightforward, Incineroar is phenomenal, so... <laughs> It's just such a good support mon, and it's so splashable. You can put it on, like, anything. Next up, I'll talk about, um, not just Hatterin, but Psy Spam in general. Now, the reason why I think Hatterin is just so, so good is because Hatterin just hits so hard. I mean, it is incredible how powerful Hatterin is, and being able to get back Expanding Force is such a buff. It... It makes Trick Room so threatening. Um, so if anybody is wanting to utilize the Psy Spam, realize Hatterene is, in my opinion, it's almost better than um, the new Iron Crown. And the reason on why I say that is because it's also a fairy type. Because dark types are really hard for Iron Crown. Like, they almost just, like, mitigate it. Um, Hatterene actually has an answer into dark types. 
So being able to have that answer, um, being able to just spam really powerful Dazzling Gleams and Expanding Forces, getting access to things like Giga Drain, most likely you'll run Protect in this slot, but I just wanted to showcase those few things. Mystic Fire, um, I think it gets Nuzzle too, which is kind of fun. Yep, there we go. Psychic Noise, which is a really cool move, prevents the opponent from healing. It's just a really solid Mon. So I would say if you haven't really considered like what archetypes you want to run and you liked Psy Spam, I would highly recommend giving this a try. Next up, I'll talk about Latias really quick. The quick Mist Ball buff I think is really cool. Um, and I don't think Latias is like broken by any means, but I think Latias is an incredible support mod. Um, as long as you play around things like Incineroar, and I mean, you can pretty closely one-shot Incineroar with a Draco. I mean, you have such a solid special attack stat, it's incredibly bulky. And yes, I know that Fluttermane, like I said, is one of the biggest winners. I do feel like Latias can be super solid. Um, and yes, I didn't go over Rillaboom, and I'm not going to, because quite frankly, Rillaboom is really good. It's still going to be a good mon, um, but I don't think it's going to be just meta-defining. I think Rillaboom actually is getting a little bit worse, almost, because of the fact of the matter that, like, yes, you can give yourself terrain control and really good recovery, all of that fun stuff. Um, and yes, uh, there are strategies in which you could use the grassy terrain, um, but I would say Rillaboom, just to give it that fair chance, would be just about as good as these mons right here because I don't think it's overwhelmingly broken anymore. I think a lot of things can beat it now. And um, back to Latias, it's just one of those Pokemon where you can give it Tailwind, give it those support type moves that uh, can really just help out the team. You can give yourself Recover. You can even let yourself be uh, a Light Clay type Mon. Like Latias is really flexible. So I'm really curious to see how many pe individuals actually start using Latias um, because I think it actually is a really solid mod in this. All right, so I'm going to go over. Uh, I kind of labeled this Don't Forget because I really feel like these Pokemon, for everyone, if you guys are having trouble team building, put these on your team immediately. I think they are going to be phenomenal in this meta. I will go over Chi and Pao really quick. You saw that Landorus I is coming back. You saw that Fluttermane is back. In all honesty, Chi and Pao does phenomenal, especially with the Focus Ash, into both of those. So even though Incineroar is big, it's like we all know we get Sacred Sword. It's a big threat. It's a, it's a phenomenal Pokemon. Chi and Pao is still Chi and Pao. I think those defense drops are really going to come in clutch. Um, especially next to like solid support mods with inner focus. I think Dragonite Champau can still be super phenomenal, especially with all these new mods picking up. So I would say if you're having a hard time picking some mods, Champau is something to very much look at. Next up, I'll go over pretty quickly. I think Iron Bundle is going to be phenomenal because it's going to be the fastest thing in, in the meta with booster energy, like it just will be. Um, and, I mean, there are so many dragons coming back. I think, and with Landorus becoming so good again, I think Iron Bundle is just, I think it thrives in this meta. I think this meta really accents Iron Bundle. So, I think really trying to build your teams around, okay, I need support, I need something fast, what can I use? Iron Bundle is a phenomenal mod. And then one moment, I have to pull something up. Okay, sorry for that long bit, I am back. But in all honesty, I think Iron Bundle can be a really solid mod. I really think that it's a Pokemon that heavily can impact a lot of the mods that I think are gonna be really, really solid. And I think with a lot of the Pokemon that are going to be good, it just makes Iron Bundle better. So if you guys haven't tried it, 
I would recommend trying Iron Bow. Next, I'll go over King Gambit. I really did want to just make sure, you know, I went over bonds that you guys kind of respected your guys' time with, even though I had that long kind of cut. But with King Gambit, I would say, and sorry my voice is all squeaky, I've been a little sick. Um, but with King Gambit, like I said, Inti like Incineroar is going to be everywhere. Intimidate is just going to happen. Uh, King Gambit's phenomenal. It is a phenomenal Pokemon. You get access to things like Low Kick to be able to destroy Incineroars. And then you can still run your Black Glasses with Sword Stance, Koto Cleave, and Sucker Punch and still be such, such a threat. I mean, King Gambit is still going to be phenomenal. In my opinion, I, I think Dragon is going to be a really effective Terra. Uh, poison probably will be pretty good too. I know you're still weak to ground with Poison, but depending on how many fighting types and fighting type moves come up, because the big thing about Dragon is going to be you resist a lot of really solid hits, but with all the Dragons that are getting better, like the new uh, Paradox forms, all of that, I would say just be wary on Dragon. Um, so Dragon or Poison, I think, would still be your best bet as a Terra type. If you want to go really, you know, crazy, you can do Dark. You just kind of lose those mind games. So I would just recommend having a good defensive Terra on King Gambit. I still think King Gambit's going to be phenomenal. I'm going to go over Ferrigraph quickly, um, just because I think the biggest thing to call out with Ferrigraph is how strong priority moves are going to be. And being able to immediately nerf them is going to be solid. So... And, you know, what's fun is you also get access to Expanding Force with Ferrigraph now. It's like, yeah, if you're running Psychic Terrain, though, you're not going to really need the priority nerf. But just thought Ferrigraph would be kind of a fun call-out. Because I do think priority moves are going to be everywhere. Um, next up, I'm going to go over Iron Hands. I think Iron Hands is actually solid in this format. If you guys are thinking otherwise, I'm going to call you crazy. I know Landorus. I know Fluttermane are in this. Um, but... Iron Hands is so good into a lot of things um, because Dark Types will kind of... I think Dark Types are going to be huge. And Iron Hands is just one of the best fighting types that's ever been released. So I truly encourage everybody, if you guys are kind of like dropping Iron Hands, pick it back up, play it well, position it properly. We've played with it for so many regulations. Like, it is still Iron Hands. You can't beat this stat spread. You just can't. It is so incredibly bulky. It is so incredibly powerful. It It's just Iron Hands. So I would highly recommend trying out some sets with him. Clear Amulet is my new favorite set because I love being immune to Intimidate. Um, but, you know, AV is still going to be really solid. So, yeah. Iron Hands. Next up, I'm going to talk about Ting Lu. Um, this might surprise some of you guys. Um, Psychic Spam, I don't think is going to be massive. But I do think it'll be something to watch out for. I think Ting Lu, with all of the special attackers running around, can make a resurgence. I think Ting Lu can be really good. There are so many mons that are special attackers that are just so good for this format. And I think Ting Lu can help mitigate that damage just enough and support just enough to where, you know, your team can really thrive. Um... If you go, I think it's like Adamant once, I want to say like 176, or I mean, right, 172, my bad. The 172, like benchmark, that, I'm pretty sure that that is what beats like every single Fluttermane build. Um, I used Ting Lu a lot in Regulation B. Um, but you get access to Heavy Slam, you get your Stomping Tantrum, you get Ruination, I... I hate missing, so I will not recommend using, you know, Sand Tomb. I just think 85% accurate is just too gutsy, but, you know, do what you guys want to. You get access to Lash Out, Throat Chop, Whirlwind. Um, it's a phenomenal mod, and I think it's actually going to have a really solid place in this meta. Alright, and then um, I'm going to kind of go over these, because I actually think these six mods really can do pretty great in this meta specifically so don't discount them i'm gonna go over lilligant because i'm gonna tell you straightforward right now i think sun is going to be so good like so good i think sun is going to be phenomenal and lilligant is still i'm correct me if i'm wrong in the comments it is still the fastest thing like if you make it jolly max speed there's nothing that's going to outspeed that thing in the sun so 
I mean, it is incredible. Yeah, no, there's nothing gonna outspeed that thing. That's 344, no. So, legitimately speaking, Lilligan's just phenomenal um, as a support mod in the sun. Being able to do things like, I mean, you know, you get access to sleep powder. I hate relying on this because 75 accuracy. But after you, um, things like close combat with 105, um, physical attack, solar blade, it's a solid mon. It is a very solid Pokemon, and I really think that, and it now gets trip. has it always gotten triple axel? Oh my gosh. That's phenomenal. And coaching? Wow. Yeah. I mean, it just becomes a better support mon. I think Asui and Lilligan shouldn't be slept on at all. I mean, you can give it like a set like Encore um, to really like mess with people. Um, Triple Axel gives you phenomenal offensive coverage. Um, you can be able to give people your ability to make them incredibly fast in the sun. Uh, you can heal up your teammates with Pollen Puff. I wouldn't really recommend it because that would be the only thing you really use it for. Um, uh... Wow, you can even give it that new move, Upper Hand. So if you predict somebody trying to use a priority move, you can pretty much flinch them. Yeah, Asui and Lilligan. And with the thought of the Sun team, I will go over Reggie Drago. Reason I am talking about it, yes, Fluttermane is the biggest winner. I will say it again. However, there are so many dragons that are going to be everywhere. That'll help Reggie Drago be really solid. So I would highly recommend trying out Reggie Drago. Build around so that, you know, you're not just immediately losing to Flutters. But I think Reggie Drago can be so solid. So definitely utilize and try out Reggie Drago. Um, very straightforward. I don't really need to say too much about Reggie Drago. You guys have seen what it does. It uses big damage move and goes boom. Clicks, wins a lot of the time. There you go. All right. I want to go over Okie Dogie. I think Okie Dogie can be so good. Yes, I know that, you know, Psy Spam and Ground-type moves, yes, I know that they're going to exist. I know that they're here. However, I think Okie Dogie is so, so cool into a lot of the mons that are good. Um, if you AV Okie Dogie, you're, you're going to be able to beat Fluttermane, like you will. Okie Dogie gets, like, Drain Punch. It's solidly bulky. And being able to accent itself by Intimidate is phenomenal um being able to go to a plus one with intimidate um you get access to just a really cool move pool like psychic fangs to break screens you get that new move upper hand if people are wanting to you know thunderclap i mean you've got so many options with this mon that i think you really just shouldn't discount it i think okie dokie is actually a really solid pokemon for this i think ursaluna blood moon is a huge win in this um, I'm curious to see what individuals come up with, but being honest with everyone, I think Ursaluna Blood Moon could be one of the best mons if played right because of how good ground is into a lot of this meta. So I would definitely, if you have dropped Blood Moon and you were a Blood Moon player, pick it back up, try it again. I think it can be so good right now, and I could be wrong, but being a solid special attacking ground type Pokemon with so many fire types, so like with Raging Bolt being that new powerful threatening electric type, like I feel like Ursaluna just wins in this, specifically Blood Moon, so I'd highly recommend trying it out. I wanted to call out Clodsire. I actually think Clodsire can be really good with Water Absorb, especially if Urshifu's still kind of big. Because of how bulky it is, it can be a pretty solid support mon. I wanted to go over this kind of quickly, just because um, one of my buddies was actually talking about how well he was doing with it. Um, and just being able to support your team with like things like Acid Spray, giving yourself stuff like Haze if they set up, um, and, and Yawn. Being kind of a nuisance is really what um, Claude Sire is kind of all about. I just wanted to give it a quick call out. I don't think it's really going to be that good, like crazily good, but I did want to give it a quick call out because I think it's a mon that's going to be slept on, um, and I think it does have some versatility. The mon that I will finish this video with is Dondozo. I think Dondozo is going to actually have a resurgence. It is 
it is just me thinking out loud. I think Don Dozo is going to be incredible in this meta. I, I really do. Um, whether you use it with Tatsu or not, I think it'll be incredible. Um, I think the Leftovers Heavy Slam uh, kind of set with Yawn and Wave Crash and Protect, I think this set is going to be so good. I, I just think Don Dozo is going to be good. I think um, he just does well into a lot of the meta. And I think if you're a Don Dozo player, I would heavily encourage you to get better with your Don Dozo. Realize what beats it and then build with the new mons to support Don Dozo even further. I think Don Dozo is one of the biggest winners in this. And I would highly recommend that you all try it out if you were a big fan of Don Dozo in the past or if you've brought it like a lot of the individuals that I know um, to a lot of our locals. I thoroughly encourage you guys to keep up with the Dozo. I think Dozo can be really solid. I'm going to come up with a little bit more honorable mentions. I'm going to pull up my spreadsheet one more time just to kind of showcase. Um, but needless to say, I will go over. I think Porygon 2 is actually really solid. Just like knockoff is kind of scary for it. So just consider that if you are going to be bringing Porygon 2. But that download boost is nasty. Um, I tried playing with Regigigas a lot. It's just not good. <laughs> I know that we want it to be good. But even next to Weezing, it just doesn't do what it needs to. So I'd highly recommend, like, if you want to, play around with it. But I don't know. It's... Like, you could make it really bulky and make it a support mod, and then if they let Slow Start kind of activate, or if you give your, like, Whimsicott Worry Seed or anything like that, um, Regigigas could be really solid, but I don't know. I don't think so. And then I didn't talk about our Chaladon, I just realized. I think our Chaladon is actually really good. I think I did mention him a little bit. But I think our Chaladon is just one of those mods where your, um... You just need to support it so much that I don't know if it's going to be like one of those mons that is really going to be meta defining, but I think Electro Shot is just incredibly powerful. Um, it is so cool being able to go to a plus one on an 125 special attack mon immediately and deal 130 damage with 100 accuracy in the rain immediately. I think it's a really cool mon. Um, do I think it'll be meta defining? No. Um, but do I think that it's really solid? Yes, I do think it's actually really good. I will be making another video over the next, probably, I'll give it like two days. Yeah, probably release a video on Christmas Eve, because yes, spoilers for, you know, it's the 22nd. But I will be making another video for Christmas Eve, just kind of going over cores and things that I think you guys should try if you're having a hard time team building. It'll give me some more time to build actual teams that won't be just crap. Because if I just throw together teams right now, I haven't really gotten enough experience. Like, I think I'm like just outside top 100 on the best of three ladder as we speak on this video. Um, but I, it's still so early. Like, I think it's like 1300 is where that is right now. So it's still like... It's such an early part of the meta, so I will develop some teams once I've seen a little bit more and maybe participate in a few tours. I appreciate every single one of you. Please share this with your friends. Please let me know anything that I can improve on with these videos or things that I could go over for you guys. I'll have more calcs and more in-depth things for you guys within the next few videos, but I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. Stay living large. Thank you so much. Peace.